Hey folks, the Legend of Zelda series has introduced a ton of characters over the years, from your everyday Hylian NPCs to your not so everyday bizarre chicken head things. As a fantasy adventure series, a lot of these characters are weirdly creative, and I love that. Whether that's someone who appears as an everyday character, but has something else to them we just can't see, or perhaps they're just outright odd in their own wonderful way. I really love odd, bizarre, infamous, and dare I say, weird NPCs and characters in Zelda games. They're so fun and add a unique flavour to the game's cast of characters. As a bit of a weirdo myself, in today's video I want to take a look at some of my favourite weird, bizarre and unique characters seen across the entire Zelda series, share their stories in case you might have missed them, or perhaps didn't get the full story. So be sure to go grab yourself a snack and drink folks, subscribe if you aren't already for more fabulous Zelda content your way, and get comfy, as we are now going to take a look at the these rather interesting NPCs and characters in The Legend of Zelda. Starting off this list is one of my favourite characters from the Wilds era across Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Out by the mountain edges between the Gerudo Desert and Faron Grasslands, we can find a character by the name of Moza. Well, we can actually find her smoke signal long before finding her. That smoke signal then turns out to be her cooking. No amount of sweet chilli sauce is going to save that. We can see that all around Moza is a bit of a smelly dump. These piles of decayed waste and bones are the remains of her failed meals. Speaking of which, we learn through talking to Moza that her specialties consist of mains featuring indulgent ingredients such as ore monster parts, and even ancient parts from guardians. Oh. Despite the clear failures and pungent smells attracting flies, not to mention the high smoke signal created as a result, Moza is convinced that her work is decent, and that she's making progress. Sorry, that pause wasn't an editing mistake, I just don't know what else to say. A few years down the line in Tears of the Kingdom, Moza has returned, and it's fair to say that she's been working on her cooking. In an inconcludable amount of time between the two games, but at least a couple, no more than five or six, Moza's been busy. She can now be found down the Rokoka Hills well, and can do a little more than just make awful, inedible meals. Moza's specialty still lies within dubious food, as well as rock-hard food, however, in a positive way now. If Link brings her either dubious or rock-hard meals, Moza has the ability to use her idiot sandwich powers to turn them into monster stew an edible meal. You just love to see some good old character development. Moza went from a terrifyingly awful cook, practicing her craft out of a dump made by her own failures, to a creative problem solver, fixing failed meals, and repurposing them into something edible. In the grand scheme of things, this is just a small development between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but it's the small developments that really add up to making the world feel as if time has actually passed between the two games, and Moza's a great example of this. Go Moza. I'm proud of you. On the breezy seaside of Outset Island in the Wind Waker, we meet a young lad by the name of Zill, also known by his more funny names among fans such as Booger Kid, or one I made up, Snot Boy. Zill is best known for the rather long and snotty bogey dripping from his nose constantly. He can be seen sniffing it up, but it just keeps coming back down hanging around. It's not exactly clear as to why, but apparently he lets his nose run on purpose. Sniffing is even considered his talent. Oh boy, don't let this boy out on the town on a Saturday. <laughs> oh, and he'll also follow Link around as he runs by, dangling his snot whip around. But something a lot of fans don't know about Zill is that this isn't his only appearance in the series, he also appears in The Minish Cap, my favourite 2D Zelda game. Once again, he's a local kid this time found in Castletown, and of course he still has his snotty nose hanging with snot. Only in this game, Zill is a bit more involved in the story. 
sort of. Not through the main quest, but he's a kid full of knowledge this time. Throughout the game, as Link progresses in the adventure, he can return to Castletown, and if he talks to Zill, the snotty wee boy will now tell Link new bits of information about town and other places in Hyrule, as well as offer kinstone fusing with Link eventually. Zill is without a doubt one of the most bizarre but cool characters in the series for his low hanging snot. He's basically just known for it. In fact, a lot of fans don't know that Zill is even his name, as he is just so often referred to as the Booger Kid or something along those lines, and the fact he does it on purpose makes his character all the more funny and lovable. The next character on this list is not just famously odd, but also mysterious. The phonogram man seen in Ocarina of Time is part of one of the biggest paradoxes in the Zelda series. Found in the windmill of Kakuko Village, we can first meet him as Child Link. And he seems happy and plays a little tune as the windmill goes round and round. He's trying to come up with a song, something inspired by the windmill itself. This is all well and good. Seven years later, when we can return to Kakariko Village as an adult, we once again meet the phonogram man. Only this time, he's not so happy and upbeat. Rather, he seems annoyed and angry. If you talk to him as adult Link, he'll rant a little about how a little ocarina boy messed up the windmill by teaching him a song. Ocarina boy? We never taught him a song in the past, so who exactly is he referring to? Well, it is actually Link, despite Link never having taught the man anything as a child. As adult Link, seven years in the future, we can learn the Song of Storms in the fast-paced chaotic windmill. The phonogram man even comments on adult Link's ocarina when pulled out, recognising and confirming that Link was indeed the one who taught him the song. But how? Well, after learning this as an adult, we can go back in the past seven years to return. The phonogram man is once again happy, but now we can play the Song of Storms, which we learn as an adult, teaching him the song which will ultimately complete this paradox time loop. The phonogram man is so infamous as he is part of one of the biggest paradoxes in the Zelda series. We turn a happy man into an angry man without ever actually starting it. but we did start it. It's a confusing and mysterious time loop that begs further questions such as where did the Song of Storms actually come from in the first place? Where did Link, the one who taught him it at some point, learn it? A simple way to define the word paradox is something that is made up of two opposite things and that seems impossible, but is actually true or possible. And the Phonogram Man and Windmill Hut and Song of Storms all fit into this and is what makes him one of the most bizarre characters as he's tied up with this paradox and I just absolutely love this little story. Found on the floor at Sandbar in central Hyrule of Breath of the Wild, we can find the Hilla Rao Shika Shrine, surrounded by beautiful and well-tended flowers. It's nice here, but horror awaits you if you dare step on these flowers. Magda, Hyrule's best gardener, but also most terrifying gardener, is the person responsible for this little island of flowers, and in order to access the shrine, you need to dodge around the flowers very carefully, making sure not to step on them. It's a mini maze surrounding the shrine. If Link steps on the flowers one too many times, he'll be met with what fans dubbed Flower Blight Ganon. Magda goes full on rage mode, and in unviewable scenes, deals with Link, tossing him out of the flower guarding, having to start the maze over again. In fairness, she does admit to having a temper when Link steps on the flowers the first two times, but it's the third cross of the line which sets her over the edge. So in a way, you can't say Link wasn't warned. A few years down the line, Magda returns in Tears of the Kingdom, at the exact same location, this time with a ruined fountain in the middle of the small island, but a more improved garden with flowers. The upheaval has unfortunately damaged it a bit, which Magda is not happy about, 
but it's cool to see that she's still tending to the flowers here and doing what she loves. Yeah, she might kill someone if more damage is done, but just leave her to her flowers and you'll be fine. Magda is such a funny fan favourite character, and has become such a massive meme during the Breath of the Wild days, and that still lives on to this day. Magda, or really better known as Flower Blight Ganon, you've truly earned your spot in Zelda character history. Moving to my all-time favourite video game, the correct opinion by the way, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. We meet a very odd and rather creepy character called Uku, a small, human head, chicken, bird-like thing. Uku is a little creepy Lukuin at first, but you get used to it. Well, more so have to, as we meet this wee bird inside every single dungeon across the game prior to the Twilight Palace. So what's Uku's story? The creepy little chicken actually serves a really helpful purpose, as the reason we meet Uku inside the dungeons, typically inside a random pot that we need to break open, is because Uku has the ability to warp Link out of dungeons whilst creating a save point in the exact room he warped out from. And when ready, Link can use Uku again through his inventory to warp right back into the exact room he left from, rather than exiting the dungeon through the main entrance and having to get back to where he previously was. So Uku is a big time saver, and actually a really clever addition to the game. This thing walked, so the travel medallion could run. But that's not all there is to say about Uku. There is quite a bit of lore behind the race that Uku is a part of. The Oka race, inhabitants of the city in the sky, are a highly intelligent ancient race. They are capable of speaking the Hylian language, but also have their own, which to us just sounds like a muddle of words and bird sounds. The origins of the Oka aren't entirely clear. We learn that they're insanely technologically advanced, believed to have prospered by using their own form of magic to create the city in the sky, the massive sky cannons, the dominion rod, which is a tool to keep contact with the royal family, and even the sky books that were left with the Sheikah. I could go into a huge lore dive packed with theories and mysteries regarding the Oka in a video itself, and maybe I will one day, but we're here for Uku the character, and the fact we venture through the dungeons with someone who appears so bizarre and creepy, but is actually one of the most intelligent beings in this world, is really cool, and an awesome discovery to make in the final dungeon and we venture with Uku, her home, the city in the sky. I don't really have much more to say, I just wanted to highlight the fact that this thing looks f***ing weird, but also so lovable at the same time. Does that make me weird? Now for the ultimate odd, weird, and just outright bizarre Zelda character of all time. <laughs> Tingo, the flamboyant, energetic, map-making, hip-breaking, heart-taking, fairy man. Tingle. Seen wearing a green morph suit with red underwear over top, Tingle is without question the most odd character in the entire series. He appears in Majora's Mask, Oracle of Ages, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventures and The Minish Cap. Arguably most notable in Majora's Mask and The Wind Waker as these games give us the best look at him, the two 3D games that he appears in. There's just so much to say about this man. He's a self-proclaimed fairy, or fairy reincarnated as he also says. He claims to be of Tingle race, rather than Hylian. In Majora's Mask, he's a map salesman, obsessed with fairies. He can be found across every region of the game, sitting high above the ground, floating with a large balloon, which Link must pop in order to get Tingle down to purchase his maps. At the age of 35 years old, his father, who works in the Swamp Tourist Center, is not a fan of his son's lifestyle and believes that Tingle, despite his age, still acts like a child. I just don't see what he means. In The Wind Waker, things are just as bizarre as we first meet Tingle this time around in jail. The people of Windfall Island came together and threw this man in jail, but what was his vicious crime to come to this decision? Stealing the Picto Box. Link being the world saving hero that he is, 
He frees Tingle from jail and allows him to set off free into the world. After this, the wee war criminal Tingle can be found on Tingle Island with his brother Ankle and friend David Jr., whilst his older brother Knuckle can be found on Outset Island. Once again, the ferryman works with maps, translating Triforce charts for Link in order to find the shards of the Triforce, which is actually a crucial part of the main story. So I guess technically speaking, Link freeing a man in jail was necessary in order to take out Ganondorf and ultimately save the world once again. So if you think about it, Tingle is kinda necessary to saving the world. Now, he isn't just a bizarre character within the Zelda series, Tingle actually somehow got his own spin-off series of games. Not just one game, but two spin-offs as well as many games on the DS. Freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land and Ripen Tingle's Balloon Trip of Love are very real games that exist for the Nintendo DS. This man's odd personality, loved by the fans, somehow earned him multiple spin-off games. This speaks levels to just how massive Tingle really is in the Zelda series, and I believe that it is truly tragic that we haven't seen him in any of the past few 3D Zelda games. He literally got spin-off games for being such a weird and bizarre character. The closest we got, recently, was Perlo in Twilight Princess, a man who runs the Star Tent minigame in Castletown, wearing a Tingle-like outfit. But it's just not quite the man himself. I love Tingle so much, he's so himself without a care about what anyone else thinks, and that's very respectful. He's fun, cheery, and different. Hopefully in the next Zelda game, whether it be a 2D slash top-down adventure or the next full 3D title, we can see the famous ferryman Tingle make a return and hear those oh-so-famous words. Yeah, that'd be nice. Thanks a ton for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, then consider subscribing for more fabulous Zelda content. And drop a wee like down below, it really helps the channel out. Who are your favourite odd characters in the Zelda series? There are quite a few, and these are just some of my personal favourites, but I'd love to hear yours too. Let me know down below in the comments. As always, a massive thank you goes to my channel supporters for helping to make these videos possible. If you'd like to be a part of financially backing the channel and these videos whilst also getting yourself access to my weekly Inside Scoop post, your name at the end of my videos, and a shout out when you join, then check out the supporting links in the description. You'll also find my social media pages down there if you'd like to keep up to date with me. Oh, and hop in the Discord server. Again, thank you so much for watching. It always means the world to me, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day or night. And until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.